what an awesome looking group. Look at these people. Uh, sending you a... uh, let's see. Haley's in the picture as well. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 that's fantastic holy shit <laughs> excellent oh man but it has also some kind of mark so I guess we can't use it unfortunately that's amazing see they have a very impressive guard with berets white berets oh my god look at that dude <laughs> holy shit we gotta post these pictures so wait, that's Matt Hale and, and I don't know he's two specimens of the white race <laughs> <Yeah>. amazing <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. God, these people look like such stereotypes. It's it's, it's really funny. Yep. <laughs> um good lord. Welcome to The Empire Never Ended. I'm Fritz, we got Boris and Bray, and uh, we're tying off uh, one of the open wounds we left gaping here last week, which is the creativity movement, so-called, the Church of the Creator. Or the World Church of the Creator, or the New Church of the Creator, or the Creativity Alliance, Mm. uh, the Creativity Movement, etc., etc. White Legions or something, Uh, they had to go through a bunch of name changes we'll get into that <laughs> and why that is sure uh, uh you mean they're not a legitimate religious organization uh, arguably these How guys are kind you? of uniquely idiotic in, mm. in the world of american nazis which is you know there's some strong contenders there but these guys are really they are the there. winners of this arc at least to me <laughs> uh i don't know i don't know how you guys feel about it but i mean it's pretty low it's some yep. pretty bottom of the barrel stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's painful. It's painful to read. Every part, every aspect of it is shitty. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Uh, right down to their role playing games. Oh, oh God, yeah. We'll have to mention that. Yeah, yeah. So there's no way we're ever going to play that. It's too. No, it's, it's, it's unplayable. It's not playable, but it's yeah. definitely funny to talk about. Um, yeah, all right. So let's situate ourselves in, in time, though. Uh, and also, yeah. we should probably pick a calendar from what I hear. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I guess I forgot to mention in the last episode, um, but since, you know, on this show, we've dealt with numerous different um, calendars that have uh-huh. their own year zeros, uh, the creativity movement, church, whatever the fuck, has its own. Um, and unlike some of the other ones we've talked about, it does not start on Hitler's birthday. Okay, um, all right. That is not year is zero. It, let me, is it more recent or... Uh, further back in time than Hitler's birthday. Way more recent. Way more recent. Is it the uh, is it the uh, the birth of Klassen? No, but that is a holiday in their church. Oh, okay, of course, uh, <laughs> Klassmas. Yeah, <laughs> where, is it, where Santa they're Klaus not even comes. that creative. It's like just Klassen Day or whatever the fuck. Um, no. Uh, no, God, is it guessable? There, uh, yeah, totally, totally. Is it okay? Is it uh, is it all right? Can I ask? Is it like a famous death? Let's get that. that no, that out of the way. Uh, no, does it does not Matthews. involve uh, any people living or dead. God, what could it be? This is it the uh, end of the Civil War? No, um, no. Ray, put and something it, out here. I see. Well, wait. Boris said the way more recent than Hitler's birth or what? Oh yeah, right. Yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. Shit. Uh, is it the the opening night of Birth of the Nation? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, it's nine eleven. Uh, uh, no, but they did celebrate nine eleven. Okay. Um, okay, I give up. I give up. It is the founding of the church. It's very oh, no. just not Blech. creative. So year zero <laughs> is nineteen seventy three, um, and okay. everything before that is I think B C, like before creativity, and A C <laughs> is after creativity. I think so. Uh, that's very confusing. Yeah, it's it is it's very <laughs> stupid too. Like, I mean, they'll be like, and the white man Bibles, uh, white man's Bible came out in eight AC. Uh. <laughs> like, okay, woof. So they're so, almost uh, fifty. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, they did some stuff for the 40th birthday. Um, because they didn't think they'd make it to 50. <laughs> Got to do this now, guys. <laughs> I'm not sure that they really did even make it. Well, I mean, we'll see. So let's 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 do a little recap of where we left off last okay, time. Great. So yeah. last week we left off with um their first martyrdom, uh that genius Brian Kozel, their security guy, the white right. beret who was shot in Milwaukee for kicking people's cars while he was <laughs> yes. distributing flyers. Um Glorious the glorious Aryan fighter he was. Yeah, absolutely. In um in their history though, uh the reason that he's a martyr is that he was apparently quote unquote murdered by Mexicans for I guess doing nothing. Uh which is, you know For being white. Yes, for being a, a proud white man. Right. Uh <laughs> so that you know that is is their martyrs day that's their first martyr so again off to a bad start there with a complete idiot being your martyr but you know that's kind of how they roll yes so uh the next major event that we ended the last episode with was um the florida reverend george loeb uh shooting and killing a black sailor um uh by the name of uh, harold mansfield and this caused a lot of problems for them. I mean, Klassen kind of saw the writing on the wall. He knew that there was going to be legal action. Uh, so the same year, that was 1991, um, the church loses its tax-exempt status for the first time. Um, right, which is like half the point of having a church in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, of course, Klassen knew that the writing was on the wall, that there would be legal action. Um, his wife had died of cancer, uh, which isn't a real thing to him. It's like a Jewish plot, whatever. Ah, so she was uh, assassinated. He doesn't believe in medicine. Uh, but then he, too, gets cancer and uh, sells his property off to William Luther Pierce of the National Alliance. Um, now, according to some of their sources, uh, some of that money – some of the profit from selling the property to William Luther Pierce was used as seed money for resistance records, which is mm -hmm. like very important, of course, for the world church of the creator or the creativity movement or whatever, because it's basically a religion that's centered in the like white power music scene. That's where it's like most prominent um, and where it would grow the most in the coming years. So, um, well, also important later for William Pierce himself, of course, who later bought it and then made tons and tons and tons of money from it. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, who didn't like the music and thought the scene was no. garbage, but made a shit yes. ton of money off of it. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, lovely people. Uh, so then, of course, Klassen offs himself in 1993, taking the hero's way out, I guess, uh, um, according to them. He ate a bunch of sleeping pills and killed himself. Um Klassen's death then starts a confusing set of succession issues and spinoffs and blah, blah, blah. I mean, even before he killed himself, he had appointed another Pontifus Maximus um, uh -huh. who didn't last very long, like six months or something like that, before he was replaced by another Pontifus Maximus, who would then be replaced by yet another one after Klassen's death. So they were having some Fuhrer issues. Yeah. As tends to happen in, in these groups. We, you know, this isn't... Too many Pontifus Maximi in the kitchen. I was going to ask, is it is it Maximi? Is it I Maximuses? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I have this, uh, I have this like, hilarious image in my head when I'm reading their shit, because they try to use Latin as much as possible. Of course. Of course, we know that Klassen, like, wanted to model his new... Reich uh, or whatever off the Roman Empire, and everybody should learn Latin because that can be like a universal white language that white people can use to communicate with each other. But I'm just like imagining all these like Nazi boneheads like trying to like study Latin declensions in a room together <laughs> and just like yes. not getting it, <laughs> you know, just being like, fuck, what? God damn it. Like, uh, I guess we have to use Latin. <laughs> didn't, pay, didn't pay attention in Latin class. Um, so the kind of official church went down to this Pontifus Maximus in Florida. Um, but in the meantime, something kind of more important happened, which is that um, 
the Reverend from Canada, Eric Hawthorne, aka George Birdie, Bird Eye, um, yep. whatever the fuck. Um, and we talked about quite a bit. Birdie. The lead singer of the band Rahoa, which, as we know, is also like the call to arms for the creativity movement or whatever, racial holy war. Um, he joins up with one of the former Pontifus Maximi uh, in <laughs> Detroit through Resistance Records and starts promoting, actively promoting uh, creativity shit in the white power music scene. So even though Bird Eye himself wasn't ever a Pontifus Maximus, he was probably more important mm-hmm. to that movement than any of like the many um, Pontify they would have. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to quantify their pontify, but yeah, the gray eminence birdie is pulling the strings, huh? It's yeah, the real power behind the throne. Yeah, so this is all kind of early to mid 90s. Um, I'm skipping over some shit because it's really not important. There, there's a lot of infighting, there's a lot of like trying to figure out what's next, but kind of the most important thing that happens after that is, um, the the lawsuit filed by the family of the murdered sailor, uh, black sailor, Harold Mansfield succeeds and the church of the creator. So the official church, um, is fined with, uh, for like a million dollars that eventually goes down significantly, but, um, it causes the official church of the creator to cease to exist officially on paper. So, um, they uh, stopped being a business, which is what they were at this point. Mm-hmm. And the National Alliance and William Luther Pierce get caught up in some of the legal issues surrounding this case. And the National Alliance is forced to um, sell the property that Classen had sold Pierce um, mm-hmm. to, to make up some of this money to pay this this family, this murdered man uh and this is unfortunately not the only murder in controversy um that these shit idiots have uh so i guess now we have to introduce shit idiot Uh Uh (laughs) (laughs) is that latin yes that is that is latin (laughs) um but probably the biggest shit idiot most important (laughs) shit idiot for for this movement at this time is um young matthew hale um matt hale is probably the most important figure in the creativity movement uh after classen um and next to bird eye maybe but he you know he becomes like in a a real Pontifus Maximus Um, at this time. So in 1996, he is a 24 year old law student um, from Illinois Buttigieg type, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. And one of the whiniest motherfuckers, just like really insufferable to watch. It's when people see Matt Hale, they will always see an advocate for white people. Because they want you and white people to start hating the forefathers and dishonoring the forefathers of this country. That's why. It's as simple as that. Uh, I mean, it's it's truly a travesty that you want to point the finger at me and my church when my church has committed, what, five crimes? I think I'm allergic to them. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I get hives. He gets a. Uh, he got into some fights later with some of the other uh, bigwigs in the creativity movement, and so they write about him pretty disparagingly now. And it's funny to see that because the, when when they recount like him coming to power, they're like he was living in his dad's basement, like you know, basically like he's a <laughs> like fail son loser, which you know vibe. he is. So yeah, um, you know, he had previously uh, had his own little like white power party. Uh, that didn't go anywhere and failed. So he started his own chapter um, of the creativity church that he called the new church of the creator initially um, before renaming it to the world church of the creator. Ambitious. Which is what most people know it as. Cause that was kind of, kind of their height. I think uh, that's when they spread the most in like the late nineties and, and early two thousands, but they would get into Hale himself would have his own legal issues uh, for being like a racist dickhead. And, uh, and then the church itself would also uh, go through some pretty intense legal problems. So since, you know, I'm not super into like 
courtroom bullshit. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think maybe we can spare the listener, uh, some of the details of the issues that they faced, but basically Matt, Matt Hale, uh, was barred from practicing law in the state of Illinois because he was like outwardly racist. Yeah. Um, for advocating race war, <laughs> for advocating race <laughs> yes. war. Um, and as a budding young lawyer, he decided to contest this. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, famously was actually defended by Glenn Greenwald um, mm-hmm. when he, you know, when he was trying to make this argument that he shouldn't be disbarred for, you know, not wanting black people in the courtroom or whatever yeah. the fuck it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of that would probably be fine. Um, like, you know, there's plenty of racist lawyers out there. They just are smart enough, I guess. To... Well, they keep it on the DL. Yeah, you know? like... he did not do this. Um, no. But, you know, it attracted considerable attention. Um, it he uh, The judge initially ruled in his favor, but then he lost out on appeal later. Um, this is, again, like the late, like 1999. Um, but within the church itself, Hale's leadership, like although it was like blossoming, and like the movement was doing pretty well in the white power music scene. Um, Hale did the classic cons- consolidation of power purge. Uh, so like in 1998, he kicked out a bunch of the like OG uh, creators um, or whatever. Uh, and like in, in, in the split off groups, they say that they, yes, he kicked them out, but they also didn't like him because uh you know, he was a dickhead and he married a 16 year old girl. Um, uh-huh. and they like objected to that, which I kind of don't really think is true. I think that's uh-huh. them, like covering their tracks later because, you know, nobody likes an infight. Yeah. Um, but 1999 would also be kind of a decisive year for them in other ways. So, I mean, a bunch of the split off guys kind of, um, focused their energies on a particular reverend in Florida. Uh, his name isn't super important. So, yeah. No need to know that because fuck these people. Um, (laughs) But then, of course, and especially fuck these people comes in 1999 uh, with the famous uh, spree killing perpetrated by um, a follower of the World Church of the Creator, Benjamin Nathaniel Smith, who um, went on like a several day multi-state shooting spree uh, in which he killed two people and himself, but injured 10 or more people. Uh, He started by like opening fire on a group of like Orthodox Jews in Chicago, um, wounding several of them, uh, then shot a, like a black man in front of his family uh, who was a former uh, basketball coach for Northwestern university um, before going yet to another state to shoot, uh, like a Korean graduate student on his way to church um, before getting into like a high speed chase and eventually killing himself. Uh, so the only good thing he did there was mm-hmm. off himself. Um, but this again, as these things tend to do uh, brought a lot of negative attention to the church. Um, I mean, he had been pretty active he was a young guy. Like I think he was 21 at the time of the shooting spree, but you know, typical kind of like dropped out of college. Cause he was like too racist and thought like everything was run by commies. And then, you know, was known to like distribute world church of the creator literature in like his hometown and was, you know, one of these activists of theirs um, and decided to take Rahoa into his own hands by his own admission. That's what he thought he was doing. Uh, And that is what, I mean, that's what they want. You know what I mean? Um, But of course, uh, this would cause a lot of trouble for Matt Hale uh, and for the church. And this is where we get into a rather confusing legal case. Um, Is this the one over the name? Yes. Is it Um, basically like the Unitarians defeated him? (laughs) More or less. uh, There was this church, right? That's um, some some kind of unitarian like uh minor very minor church very minor uh, church called the had, Te Ta Ma Truth Foundation yeah right and also had the name uh, church of the church creator of the creator yeah yeah and so uh they sued and won um 
against Matt Hale, and he had to drop the name legally. Yeah, but this which, caused... which really shows, you know, <laughs> this is like this is the religion of the of the of the racial holy war, and like a church of like six old hippies just wipes the floor with them and steals their name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they can't do shit about it, and they change the name. God, they're so bad at this. Right, but of course, um, you know, if if you read their literature, uh, they frame this all as that it was like the Te Ma Te Ta Ma Truth Foundation Church of the Creator was actually a front group for like the ADL and the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, oh that's, yeah, that's what they believe. Right, um, and so they believe that this was like a big conspiracy to like, of course, you know, rid the world of their very powerful church that wasn't doing stupid shit like having guys go on shooting sprees, um, or you know, yeah, had to change right. their name before because one of their reverends murdered a person. Um, of course, that has nothing to do with it. It must be a, a Jewish plot because, of right. course, this is the white man's religion, um, and you know. This God, is yeah, persecution he's... by the state. And of course, whiny ass oh, um, yeah. Hale. Hale had to like, you know, frame this as, you know, persecution against their religion. The fact yes. that like uh, the court ordered against them that like, you know, they had to have to change um, the name, their name and all of their literature was in fact like an attack on their faith and that like the U.S. government was um, forcing them to like revise their Bible well, um, yeah, I think they something like I read. Uh, they're literally forcing us to burn our holy texts. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, yes, he's so whiny. He does this all the time, all the time. Every time I see him, oh, uh, in front of anyone, he's he's complaining that people are against his religion. They don't understand his faith. Like to the point when he was on like Fox News at some point, and uh, Kasich was saying to him, uh, "How could you even make a statement like that? That's an outrage. Well, Are you, you defending a man who we committed don't believe, murder? We don't believe in your value system. You may believe that all men are created equal, but we do not. You're attacking our beliefs now. Like, look at you. You're a Christian, and you're attacking my belief system and shit like that. That's all he does. Yeah. Very whiny. Very whiny. Um, but of course, at this time, like some of this controversy wasn't going so well for the church. And this is like another split happens within the movement where some of the like OGs that hadn't been kicked out and started following this, like other reverends, uh, other pontifus, Maximus, um, uh, voted to kick Hale out of office because of his quote unquote cultish tendencies, um, which, you know, <laughs> unlike whole, what, unlike the other Pontifus Maximus. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Um, unlike any of them. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, like their war of the popes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty hmm. much. Maybe um, he was taking this church business too seriously. He forgot. It's only for taxes. Yeah. He forgot. It's just the front. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, I mean, he did make some questionable decisions in this time period. He like, he, he appointed like a 16 year old kid from Canada to be like the head of like the Canadian chapter to get <laughs> pissed off some of the older, like, uh, creators there. Again, we're, we're not talking about like large numbers here. Um, but like, you know, he, he was like a cause celebrity for like these white power guys. Um, and like a lot of them liked him a lot. Right. So, cause you know, he was you know, taking this up to the highest courts in the land, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, fighting for the church. Uh, but this would also be his undoing, too, because um, Hale gets, well, in his words, he gets set up by the FBI. Uh, but from what I can tell, he's just a moron um, <laughs> who, like, didn't know, like, when to cover his tracks and like who not to talk to about doing illegal shit. Um, yeah. I mean, we've seen this time and time again with like Nazi movements in the U S and the FBI, like the FBI does set them up a lot of times, but a lot of the other times they're just, they do something very, very dumb and, yes. um, you know, suffer the consequences for it. And, you know, I'm not going to, yeah, they're, they're very chatty about very, very illegal shit. Right. So reportedly, I mean, the FBI had had a guy in the church already um, who I guess had won the ear of um, Matt Hale and uh, Matt Hale, I guess, asked him to procure 
personal information for this federal judge, Judge Lefkow, uh, the one that was involved with this case, um, uh-huh. so that, you know, actions could be taken. Um, he used some other, like, he, you know, different times he used different words that implied, of course, that he was planning uh, to off this judge. Um, and, of course, he was saying this directly to an FBI agent. Um, so the FBI came a knocking and <laughs> and uh, bye bye hail. Um, yeah. To, to cut a long story short, I mean there was of course a, a whole court case about this and the like. But you know he gets sent sentenced to forty years in federal penitentiary where he still is today. Um, but yeah, when he's he's uh, there, was, I saw some some shit from a supporter of his on BitChute, of course. Uh, that was like a news report talking about the letters he would write to his mom. And they're really weird. Like they're full of like stick figures with smiley faces. And like, um, he, uh, calls himself figgy to his mom and, and pre- represents himself as like, I guess what is like a stick figure version of a fig. What? And at one point he signs his letter to his mom. Um, the one time Pontifus Maximus of his own church even signed one letter, Pontifig Bananimus Avocado Maximus. So, Man, was he taking that salubrious living shit seriously? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's making some toilet wine. Yeah. Well, I mean, he could be just like, you know, actually following Classen's. Well, uh, it's ostensibly, yes. This is, yeah, he, he, um, he apparently uh, w- at first was really committed to this like diet, this kind of Classen diet that we talked about in the previous episode. Um, but I guess uh, I understand he gave it up in like a couple of weeks. Because mm. you're in prison, and it's, <laughs> you know, not so yes, uh, availability of fresh fruit and, and <laughs> yes. vegetables isn't you know what they're known for up, no. up there in federal prison. Um, but he still identified as as this guy, so apparently he identified himself as Figgy. Yeah. They did like uh, specifically, yeah, avocados and figs and the like. Um, well, sure, who doesn't? Uh, like uh, Classen, Classen wrote about like how when the white man like exterminates like everybody else from the planet and they can finally populate like tropical and subtropical regions that this will be great <laughs> for the white man because then they'll be able to produce all the, like the awesome tropical fruit that you can't grow <laughs> in like colder climates. And he goes at like at length starts describing like every tropical fruit known to like, like, you know, like, he's like, okay, we'll have bananas and papayas <laughs> and durians <laughs> and like, <laughs> on and on and on. You can see it's like, you know, drooling. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> he and Bob Matthews, man fans of fruit well no bob would have hated this right because he was just yeah. about the apple pie he was about the wasn't, apple pie yeah yeah and and yeah milk. No, this is some this is some liberal hippie shit yeah this is the some city stuff making me eat fruit and nuts yeah <laughs> the fuck is that which again imagine like all those like bonehead ass like fucking skinheads and shit like you know reading like uh you know getting like creativity liter- literature at like you know some like rahoa show and then opening yes. up salubrious living and being like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although yeah. I guess that one's that one's pretty low down on their uh, list of reading. I think like you can see on some of their websites, like when they have like all the shit. You know, of course, it's nature's internal religion, white man's Bible, and then somewhere there is like salubrious living because they mm-hmm. have to include it because you know. Yeah, it was written by their man. It was written by their their god. Um, I don't know. It would really fuck up the vibe of your bookshelf. You know, you've got like fucking siege you've got the turner diaries you've got mine comp and then there's one called salubrious living (laughs) yes yeah paleo diet or whatever yes (laughs) um so i mean again uh what happens after hale goes to prison and they're not allowed to use their name anymore is that like a bunch of spinoffs start popping up everywhere um kind of some of the more the stronger chapters are actually in like south africa or um in Mm. in australia and there are some in south africa as well though like kind of more militant ones in south africa there was even um some shootings um involving uh like one of their militias and some like survivalist camp in namibia um Wow. Like crazy shit. Um, but yeah, they start taking on like different names. So, you know, Hale's in federal prison. He's a domestic terrorist. Um, groups start popping up like the white crusaders of the church, or they just call themselves Rahoa. Um, the, 
the Australian division kind of morphs into leading what is now like known as the Creativity Alliance, which is kind of one of the bigger uh-huh. groups uh, that's like carrying on, carrying the flag of creativity. I hate having to use the word creativity for this. It, we all do. It really sucks. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, what were one of the, what were their other names again? Uh, there's White Crusaders of the Church. Um, there's that one's in Australia, I think. And then there's Northwest Church of the Creator, which is in Montana, which is one of the biggest chapters, and that falls apart. I mean, they all start falling apart. Um, well, they call themselves. I noticed Matt does anyway. Call he calls their followers creators. Mm. Yes. Yes. You can call them the Banana Avocado Church or something. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The Banana Avocado Church of Figgy. <laughs> uh, but Hale still does have, like, he still is trying to run the church from prison. Mm-hmm. And, like, he does still have, like, some people who are following him um, and using various different names. Um, and I guess is particularly, of course, successful in prison. Um, they have, like, their own prison imperator. Uh, oh, wow. Who Damn. is, like, I guess in charge of recruiting in prisons. Um, but I guess some of the other – well, they say this, at least in their literature. Uh, some of the other spinoff guys thought this was, like, not cool guys, you know. Uh, wouldn't be associated with like low life prisoners. You know, we, we take our religion from a racist real estate developer, (laughs) 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 not, not, you know, uh, murderers and shit in prison. Um, but you know, what else, what else can we say about like the organization of the church? There's not really much to say about it because again, like they all kind of take on their own interpretations of Classen's work. And it's essentially, you know, different power struggles among different groups on who gets to be like the official Pontifus Maximus and whatever, whatever. So, you know, Hale is still doing that shit from prison even today. Um, mm. Or I mean like, you know, or at least he was until, you know, relatively recently. Um, but like, you know, he, uh, like I said, he was like a hero for some of these guys. So, you know, famously, if we talk since like we mentioned in, um, the resistance records episode, um, the, the Gade family, Prussian blue, uh, that like child band, um, formed by, you know, this demented mother of these three children who like had her, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed twins sing white power songs. Um, a lot of, their content uh, revolved around the creativity movement. Like she named their third daughter after Matt Hale. Um, oh. Like the, the daughter is named Dresden Hale. Oh um, God. Dresden Oof. Hale Gade. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, obviously uh, he did leave some, some mark in that movement. Now there's like a lot of other people that we can talk about that, have been kind of associated with the creativity movement or the world church, of the creator or whatever that have done, you know, different degrees of like crazy shit. Um, do you guys know about Craig Cobb? No. Yeah. I think I know who he is. Yeah. Um, I mean, Craig Cobb was, I'd say like, you know, made some headlines relatively recently by relatively recently. I mean, in like the last decade, um, Mm. he's, uh, racist, shithead follower of the creativity movement um who was famous for uh trying to take over the town of leith north dakota in like 2012 2013 do you remember this this was around like the standing rock yeah there's a little film about it yes there is also famous for Um, doing a dna test in one tv show and getting a result that he's 14 percent like sub-saharan african origin or something like that whoops Yeah, but I think he I think he chalked that up to Jewish lies, mm. <laughs> which is like or what he they just always do, and meant, they can't explain yeah. it. <laughs> or he just thought he meant the boars, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So I mean, there's there, there are these kind of like shitheads who are still floating around, carrying on like the banner of of the creativity movement. Um. You know, a couple other like high profile um. Nazis and murderers have like had some relation to the church in some way or another. Um, like they have famous reverend in, in Pittsburgh who went to prison a bunch of times who murdered his girlfriend and continued to like promote their literature a lot. He's kind of, if you ever um, look at like Classen's videos on uh, 
on BitChute, that guy's always like in the comments being like, oh, Hail okay. Classen, Hail Classen, I'm out of prison again, Hail Classen, and shit like that. <laughs> um, God. Oh, I just want to, I just want to say one thing. So like I, I did mention that there's like a, still a lot of like different spinoffs and a lot of power struggles and stuff going on. Um, but on one of the like official websites of theirs, uh, it has a like hilarious disclaimer. Like, first of all, everything on the site is incredibly poorly written, uh, which, you know, it's not that surprising, but the mm-hmm. disclaimer that's like at the head, like at the t- beginning and end of the page says, note, the church of creativity is a professional, nonviolent, progressive pro white religious group. We promote <laughs> white civil rights, white self-determination and white liberation via a hundred percent legal activism. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> we do not promote, tolerate, nor incite illegal activity. And then like hmm. you can click for, for more information and then it, you know, racial holy war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like the, it, the part that really cracked me up is the like hundred percent legal, like, mm, but yes. trust us guys. We're, we're trying to, you know, yeah, that is verifiably false. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Also. It is not our objective to declare a war of mm. violence against the Jews, blacks, <laughs> and other non-whites. Uh, notice that they started using black and, instead of the mm. N-word, so they're deviating from uh, yeah. nature's eternal religion a little bit. Revisionist. It's heretical. Um, mm. We ass- we assert ourselves nonviolently, but are adamant in our pursuit to freely practice our religion as guaranteed by the United Nations Declarations of Human Rights. That's pretty pathetic. Mm. We demand, as everyone else, the right to peacefully assemble and the right to organize. Um, so, I mean, this is this is the more revisionist branch, yeah. I'd say. You know, they've kind of lost some of their flair from the old, you know, Rahoa days of the the heydays of the nineties. Racial holy reformism. <laughs> racial holy uh, reforms the united nations the, the <laughs> declaration of universal declaration of human rights states that we can in fact practice our religion <laughs> have a right to racial holy war <laughs> wow well uh that's a pretty good you know given this non-violent turn they've clearly taken here maybe we should look at uh their their <laughs> uh tabletop rpg game that they made. Oh God, yeah. Should we <laughs> look at this for a second? So, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. when, when I saw this, I, I immediately sent it to Fritz, and I, you know, I didn't bother to read through it myself because I was like, "This oh is God. this is Fritz territory." Um, but I also noticed they have like a lot of they have fanfic and stuff too. <laughs> it should it yeah. should uh, we should note also that like the World Church of the Creator, um, you know, had experienced its heyday on Stormfront. And it was very much like a kind of Stormfront uh, centered movement for a while. You know, that's when like Stormfront was really going hard in like the early 2000s, late night, uh-huh. you know, whatever, early 2000s. And um, and so they they there is a considerable amount of fan produced content of theirs, uh, and some some of which they felt was good enough to post on their official website. One of these things is, of course, this game. Um, and yeah. Do you want to it's run got us strong Rahoa the game? Oh, good lord! Yeah, it it really does have strong uh, Stormfront vibes. Like, there's a couple reasons why this game is unplayable, and one of them is that um, just like I mean, okay, so they they might not speak Latin, but they do use an incredible amount of racial slurs at every possible chance that they can. So their enemy chart is just uh, four or five different races that they hate, of course, um, which are described here as uh, N-words, of course, which you have different varieties of, uh, latrinos, um, which is, I guess, them being clever, uh, sand N-words, which, of course, also have different classes. Um, well, oh, uh, <laughs> my God, I can't even like read it. No, it's, it's, complete, it's like everything else. In and, then, this and then two religion. other it's ones like, that I'm not unreal. even gonna like come up with a come up with a censored version of. Yeah. No, I mean, like, it's really all of, this but... shit, all of this shit. It's 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 it drives me nuts. Like uh, yeah. I haven't had this much difficulty I, like no, slogging it's, it's, through Nazi text you, before. Can't even read it to yourself, really. Um, uh, the other reason it's unplayable is that it's li- like literally unplayable. Like the the rules aren't great. They don't make a whole lot of sense. And in fact, um, the rules are set up so that like basically everyone except white people 
will it has to be way more powerful than the white people are, which is really in line with their whole, you know, their whole movement's kind of idea about the world that is like somehow they are both the strongest and the weakest, you know, and somehow their enemy is both the strongest and the weakest. So it starts out like this. Uh this is just the introduction. There's very little um story that I've been able to find. I guess you're supposed to make most of it up, uh, I assume. It really, though, it, it's just like the Turner Diaries as an RPG. It starts out like this. Sometime in the near future, the world is torn by chaos, anarchy, and mayhem as the world has been devastated by the non-white population growth. All the lands of the world have been overrun by these despicable hordes, while the noble white man has been reduced to a tiny minority, barely surviving the terrors unleashed by the heinous forces of the malicious June. Many scholars predicted... There are many scholars... Sorry. Uh, that's funny. Many Again, scholars Scholars predicted. such as, like, real estate developer Ben Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So many scholars predicted the ravaged earth that oppresses the superior white race, but few yielded these concerns. As a direct result, all civilization has been destroyed in a fiery blaze of disaster. There is hope, though. A small yet growing force is gaining power and is dedicated to cleansing the world of all the vermin. This band of white warriors, which is what you're called, um, you're called white warriors, knows full well that defeat is not an option. Either they will carry the banner of the white race to form a grandiose white empire, or all will be consumed in cold, dark blackness. You are one of those warriors. Shall you arm yourself for battle, or will you watch the beautiful white women die? (laughs) The choice is simple. The racial holy war will ensure triumphant victory. That victory is inevitable. Rahoa! And instead of being like a dungeon master or game master, you're uh, a war master. And uh, mostly it's just about guns. That's really, all of it's just about guns. A lot of the guns don't exist in real life. <laughs> um, and, uh, and apart from that, like, you have to keep, you have to start every battle with like a, a kind of a heroism check to see how heroic your group is. But inevitably, just mathematically, your group will it, like lose tons of these um, because like, again, you've imagined your enemy as super powerful and uh, the game mostly results in your white warriors running away from fights Mm. (laughs) apparently as it plays out. So yeah, that's, that's their game. I mean, this kind of reminds me of those, the, the um, resistance records video games. Oh, it really does. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. In fact, as far as like, the mood and vibe of it goes it very much feels like Zog's Nightmare or Ethnic Cleansing, which again are both, you know, mostly based on the Turner Diaries in, in one form or another, you know. But I like it yeah. that they set themselves up in like put themselves in this position that they can't win, right? Of course, I mean, yeah. It's this really, yes. It's got to, there's got, it's got to say something about them and their worldview. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you know, as one commenter on some like a uh, Reddit board about this game said, um, the the problem with building a fascist movement is that you have to find people who are dumb enough to be fascists. You know, it's it's already self defeating. Right. Oh, you're you're uh, the only other thing about this game that's notable though is that your gun is like a character. Like your gun will build its own experience as well and like level up, which is uh, kind of fun, but also is a little glimpse into their. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Into kind of who they mostly are, which is usually just gear gear nerds, um, and in this case, not even very competent gear nerds. I mean, some of the guns you have available to you are things like um, the SS Death Gun, uh, <laughs> the the Ultima Gun, uh, yeah, this kind of stuff. And uh, oh, and N N Word Killers is a gun, as as well as uh, the Viking. Um, so f- yeah, yeah. I mean, we just really, you can't say much about this game, except that it's been consistently considered uh, the worst, if not one of the three worst tabletop RPGs ever made. Oh. <laughs> it, has, it has a reputation in the community. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah no, not that far off from, like, Zog's Nightmare and the like. No. Nah. And it was written by this guy named uh, Reverend Kenneth Molyneux, who uh, ah, right. was a prominent Christian, uh, not, sorry, Christian identity fucking uh, creativity movement blogger as well and kind of 
Yeah, I, I have the feeling that he might be running a lot of their uh, the creativity creativity alliances website because if you notice, um, a lot of his stuff is published on there, and if, like the pont the current Pontifus Maximus um, of the Creativity Alliance is in prison um, and won't be getting out till like next year, and he's been in prison for quite some time. Mm-hmm. I think both the Pontifus Maximus and the Asta Primus, which is the second in command. Um, I think they're both in prison. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Joe Esposito, who's the current Pontifus Maximus elect of uh, whatever, the Creativity Alliance, which is still one of only one of other separate groups, but kind of the biggest one. Uh, he goes, he apparently is like an OG that goes back to, uh, like he knew class in and was there from like day one, but you know, him and George, uh, he's Loeb, an apostle. George Loeb, of course, is also um, an active member of the community, despite still being in prison for uh, you know, murdering a man in 1991. So, I mean, like, I guess we'll see what happens next year. Uh, if Esposito gets out, um, I mean, they celebrated, I think that's, he became prison imperator in, on their 40th anniversary. And was then appointed as Pontifus Maximus like a couple years later. So that was like 2013. And then I think 2017, according to them, is when he became Pontifus Maximus. And he gets out in 2023. I imagine it's disappointing to be given the title of prison imperator, only to realize it just means prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm not sure how that works. What's your your empire there? Uh, Yeah. It's unclear. (laughs) It's clear. <laughs> it's a funny detail from this story too that the agent um that got Hale in the end was named Evola. No? Yes, yes. Maybe that's why he trusted him. Tony Evola. <laughs> um Oh man. Matt Hale almost publicly endorsed Trump, but decided it might hurt his campaign. That would have been fun. Um some of those guys love Trump. Um that fucking uh what's his name? Uh Craig Cobb dude is a Trump guy. He like want to rename like some town in North Dakota Trump or something. <laughs> uh, so the current Pontifus Maximus, as I mentioned, is this guy, uh, Doctor Joe Esposito. I'm not sure what he's the doctor of, if anything. Um, <laughs> now he considers himself to have like a very legitimate claim to Pontifus Maximus, and indeed many agree, uh, because he goes back to the very early days. He was friends with uh Ben Classen. If you read his like his writings from prison where he talks about like how things looked in the early days uh very poorly, um he he had um uh met Classen like even I think in year one by their calendar, so 1974. Um and had like been instrumental, he says, in distributing their literature in the early days. Um, but you know, he was in and out of prison for most of the seventies, and uh, and so he didn't actually get ordained as a minister until he was uh, until nineteen eighty two, when Ben Classen uh, appointed him as or turned him into a, a reverend, ordained, ordained him. him. And they, uh, he moved up to live on the compound or live close to the compound, um, which he, for some reason decides to tell us the address and phone number of in 1985, <laughs> completely useless information. Cause he's writing this like a couple years ago. Uh, it's like address C O T C P O box 400 auto North Carolina 85. telephone 19904. <laughs> I guess just um, call whoever has that number now, you know. <laughs> so if if we go back to like the early days of the church, you'll remember that he had the school for gifted boys. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh this this Joe Esposito was the gifted boy. The security mm. guard on no, he was not. He was um <laughs> he's not a gifted <laughs> gifted boy. I'm very curious as, as to what he is a doctor of. Um, <laughs> yeah, nobody I'm nobody has well. said anywhere. It's just a yeah. He was uh, he was the security guard on the compound, and his primary job was to keep the school for gifted white children clean and ready for students. Mm. 
And then he describes at length uh, what his rooms looked like in the church. Like uh, he lived above the church and how everything was a beautiful sight to uh, with, behold. Built Western style with the balcony going around the whole top floor. In front of the huge logo of our church, the Simulacrum Candidus, which had bullet holes in it from the Christian who shot at us one night. I had a riot pump and Charles an M16. We are ready for war. Rahoa! (laughs) The lower level of the church, the under garage, was for storage of books, etc., etc., and copying machines and printing press. Have you heard them at the end when they they say Rahoa, uh, there's this, like, thing that they do, and it sounds like this. It sounds like... Ah! And then it gets repeated back to them. Like that. Have you heard this? No. Aren't they just saying... I have no idea what they're, they're saying. Not re- they're not repeating the whole word? It's not... Maybe... Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> they're all fucking drunk and eating nothing but raw carrots. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, about why he's in prison. This is what he says. I was on the run from a parole warrant at the time and forced to leave the headquarters when Zog started asking questions. But on the night after me and Charles, Carls, drove Ben and Heather to the Atlanta airport for his trip to Germany, we seen people on the church property. The church had a fence around it and also censors. They were down. By the creator school, Carls, Messick, and I armed ourselves. Him once again with an M16, and I went with a riot pump and tried to catch the violators, but they got away and there was no damage. Within a week, I was captured and sent back to New York for prison. Uh, Months later, Carl's was arrested in a raid on the church for possession of weapons, M16, shotgun, 357, a carbine, hundreds of rounds of ammunition. He wrote to me the whole time and then just vanished. I have tried to find my good friend, brother Carl's Messick. Tried others who have known him, Ron Mc... McVan, April Gade, who is um, the mother of the the Gade twins of Prussian Blue. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Reverend G. Loeb uh, and others to no avail. Of course, Reverend G. Loeb is in prison for the murder of the sailor. Um, the loss of our church and all that land breaks my heart. I never found out why Dr. William Pierce brought the property or whatever happened to it. The passing of Ben was one of the worst things to happen in my life. At the time, I was in the hospital at St. Vincent's with a compound fracture on my tibia, a cracked tip, and numerous other injuries. Three N-words tried to rob me in a hotel in New York City. I was a 228-pound power lifter from prison. And then uh, he talks about uh-huh, how okay. he threw them out a window. Um, and presumably, that's why he's in prison. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't say whether, you know, he... Um, killed these men or not or like what actually happened i haven't really been able to find much online about him but it seems like a guy that no he said it he's he's like a he's like a superhero he's buff he weightlifts and he threw a bunch of people out of windows i'm sure that's exactly how it went down uh yes defenestration um ah yeah classic on this show so i mean this is this is the genius who is now the current pontifus maximus uh who is set to get out of prison relatively soon so next year and he's a guy who is you know keeping in regular correspondence with his um followers uh but for some reason he is now not using the term zog but rather jog jog um yeah j-o-g um, hmm. uh and i guess jewish occupied government maybe well zionist wasn't maybe he made some christian identity friends in jail and now he's some kind of weird zionist <laughs> well maybe it does because like everyone knows they're anti Semitic, so it doesn't they don't need to pretend anymore that they're just against Zionism. So he can just say Jews, I guess, maybe. And also it makes them different from other groups saying Zog, so I guess. Yes, they have to be specific. Yeah. Uh, mm. They're mm-hmm. special in their own little ways. Yeah, um so yeah, I mean he they publish some of his letters from prison. Um and a lot of it's just what you'd expect. Uh, it's a lot of whining about how they're, you know, trying to um, suppress the white religion. I'm glad our brothers and sisters in the struggle for white rights and white religion are angry at what is happening. And it makes me proud to be part of an organization and a church that is only for us. That's why I've been a creator in all caps for all these years. And then in all caps, honoring Ben Classen and never forgetting <laughs> to practice and put into action our golden rule. Um, no Fried foods. <laughs> uh, do, do you know their golden rule? 
No, what is the Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's like if it benefits the white race, it's good or something like that, right? Yeah, because they figured that um, the 14 words wasn't enough. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and so they have 28. We need 16. Oh. <laughs> they have 28 words. 28 words. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, uh, where is it? Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 23 words. I'm sorry. What is good for the white race is the highest virtue. What is bad for the white race is the ultimate sin. Um, deep stuff there. 28 words. But don't they care about the children? <laughs> what about the yeah, children? There's no children at all. Yeah, there's no children there. How are you going to hmm. uh, I don't know. Con- continue on the white race? Well, you know how Nazis are. I guess they want to keep their relationship to children open. You know. I guess. That's clearly a ripoff of David Lane, though, right? I mean, David Lane has 14 words and they have to do 23. Yeah, that's that's also why they have jog and not zog. They're pricks. David Lane, David <laughs> Lane, uh, <laughs> David Lane respects them though. Uh, oh. I guess he doesn't like that they're um, like a non-theistic religion. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he he's got respect for them because they do the they fight because the they're racist and violent. They, yes, because they're racist <laughs> yes. and violent. <laughs> Yeah, oh, World God. Church of the Creator. What's not to love? It's nothing. There's a, nothing a, good. A church only a mother can love. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Shout out to Matt's mom, <laughs> who is also really racist and crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The uh, they had like a whole women's thing too. I don't know. Um. After uh, a separate church for women. They didn't have for a separate Matt's mom. Church. Yeah. <laughs> they no. They had their own like um uh. This was in the 90s, so like post class and era, uh, they had their own like women's group, Mm -hmm. um, which I guess was there. It was called the Women's Frontier. uh, And this is in 1998. It was led by um, Lisa Turner, who was their um, women's information coordinator. Uh, And yeah, it's not too exciting. They do advocate for like women also doing lone wolf stuff. Um, oh. And like brought up, yeah, like the examples of like some heroic women uh, in history are uh, Katie Ain- uh, Kathy Ainsworth, who was a um, female clans cl- woman, clans woman uh, um, who was involved in like bombing black churches uh, in in you know during the freedom struggle era, uh, and then uh, in synagogues she um, she bombed synagogues actually in, in Jewish people's houses. Uh, in the South, like Mississippi or something. And then other um, exemplary women are Eva Brown. Of course. Because of course. Yeah. Uh, and Katya Lane. So David Lane's wife, um, who, I mean, we didn't really talk too much about this. So she, she married him when he was already in prison. Oh. And she's um, largely responsible for- So she's for, good in nuts then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's largely responsible for like getting his work out and stuff like that from prison. Um, okay. She's very active in the white power movement. Um, but then, of course, the ultimate uh, role of the white woman is to produce white babies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, nothing, nothing groundbreaking there. <laughs> but at least they like, you know, had a women's chapter, which some of these other groups didn't. But, you know, I don't think... At least they allowed them to do terrorisms, you know? <laughs> yes, at least they I mean, did. <laughs> These guys are feminists. I bet they have been called that. Oh, I would not I'm be sure, surprised sure. at all. Yeah, if, in, some, in some fight, like, yes, one of these yeah. many, like, um, infighting shit shows that they've had. Um, yeah. Well, what a horrible, stupid church. I don't know if... Is there something that can be said about this whole history that we described from the beginning until now? Um did the church somehow change from class and times? Um, no, I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, these guys just, they suck so much. It's like, uh, they suck so bad. They're boring. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's just the, it's just the N word and whining. That's their thing. Yeah. And of course the difference between them and, and like s- some of the other groups we've talked about is that their philosophy is so simplistic um and like so overly ambitious and that they you know actually want to like exterminate all the other races in the world um that you know you can see how it appealed to dudes who listen to like simple lyrics like 
RAC Oi music or something. Yes, it's um, it's very simple. Do they make any it's, kind of like references? Like, are do, do do they have any kind of influences? Like, did Klassen or Hale or any of them like like some other races? Like, or um, do they? Yeah, I mean, they like the National Alliance. No, oh, but like. Um, older ones like are they into like nazi nazis like they like hitler yeah 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 Yeah, absolutely Mm. yeah yeah but like to them hitler is um well i mean classen would always say he was like the the best leader Mm. to have emerged and and something like that even though he disagreed with some of the philosophies Mm -hmm. like specifically the arianism stuff uh it wasn't it wasn't white enough Mm. uh which means it wasn't like American enough, really. Yeah, in this kind of American philosophy of whiteness, which is you know okay. kind of different than what you got going on in Europe. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, they again, their philosophy is is so basic. It's yeah, there's not much really to it. Um, it's they consider themselves to be like scientists who like embrace logic and reason. And of course their logic and reason is that like nature doesn't like race mix, which is complete fucking nonsense. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. And they, uh, yeah. And they dress it all up with Latin terms, uh, call themselves Imperator. You know, I just realized though, guys, is that we're like 93 episodes into this show here. And who would have thought, that after all this time, fucking Charlie Sargent would be like the, the most normal person we ever talked about. I mean, <laughs> like, I was just thinking about how, like, how did he put it? Right? He said something like, uh, "What's your what's your ideology? Racism, the simplest ideology there is." is isn't that what he said? Yeah, like simplest politics. I or mean, something. that's yeah, something. something like this. Uh, no imperator. <laughs> no need to like come up with a new religion. No. No need to be an occultist, you know? Yeah, I mean, what I don't understand about them uh, is that, like, you know, once they cease to have the benefits of being a religion, then why be that at all? Yeah, you know, why I, even call it, yourself? Why even try to, like, maintain that farce? I think just so you can whine. I really think it's just so you can claim you're an oppressed religious minority. I mean, I, I think, think at this reason. point, that's all it is, honestly. Uh, I mean, you know... Uh, there's there's nothing there's nothing to it. I mean, like nobody's. I really doubt anybody's actually reading these texts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's it's a very strange group because like their founder Klassen, he had some kind of like nerd ambitions, but he has no imagination at all. Like even like yeah. by Nazi standards, like he's just just nothing there. But he wants he wants to be a nerd. He wants to come up with his ideology and write books and has a have a church and theology. But he's just not capable of imagining anything. Dude, the, so I have I haven't seen like an expression as blank as his on a dog. You know, mm. like you look into those eyes and there's nothing there. Mm. And he, he he does look like a beaver, which we know he admires. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, that man, he's, he's so some it's kind a of very an animal, strange. I think. <laughs> I mean, like when you look at like Richard Butler, he's like he's he has a lot of nonsense to say, like. Like in like their interpretations of the, the Bible and all this nonsense about Anglo-Saxons and so on. There's like stuff there doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but at least but, at least he's smashed. You yeah, know? <laughs> and this is like I don't know. So I don't know. Yeah, they're like why does this even exist? Like you can just be a, like a, a racist, violent person without any of this stuff. Like it's not because they, they, yeah, they're clearly not the, good know? at inventing uh, things. So I don't know why even bother. Yes. Like, and it's one of those things that you read and you're just like, who is their audience, mm. really? Like, who, who are these fucking people that, <laughs> that really feel this message? Mm. And what do they think that message is? I can't... Uh, it's, it's, it's just It's being, hard to imagine like, being one of these racist. people. Yeah. yeah. I mean... But there's so many more options for that. You I know, mean, like that fucking ones. guy, like the Reverend Hardy Lloyd, who's like a deeply mentally ill dude, you mm. know what I mean? That like... Yeah. Is just like fucked up in the head, like committed a murder... And just continues to go to prison constantly for like violating his parole for being super racist. Yeah. And that's like just what all of these people are like. And like some of them have, you know, credentials, like whatever. One of the like higher ups now in the Creativity Alliance has like a PhD or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they like, you know, they like showing that off. Um because, you know, he's yeah, a scholar or whatever that, you know, follows this philosophy. But you have to be like 
a complete charlatan and like not serious yeah. to read anything that Ben Classen has ever read and take it seriously. Yeah. Like I even went, like I read through more of their, um, so, cause I said like nature's nature's eternal religion is almost unreadable mm. in, in that it's like 400 pages and, and just terrible white man's Bible fucking also garbage unreadable. Um, so, you know, I tried to, I read through some of their newsletters, which is a lot more digestible. Um, but even that, like none of it, none of it really has like a coherent, message like they at some point you know again they're maintaining this farce of being a religion and but they're basically like edgelord atheists in that sense yes. except that they don't even have like they don't believe in like any even kind of real science to back that up it's literally the writings of a guy who got rich young at life and just spent time writing racist books and like that's their like logic and reason that they argue with so like in the newsletters they'll often like talk about world religions and like what's wrong with them uh so like they <laughs> uh they talk about like i don't know the catholic church they have a they have a like a whole issue dedicated to like analyzing the catholic church versus creativity the orthodox church versus creati creativity and like all this other stuff but there's like really nothing to it. They don't make any kind of yeah. compelling arguments yeah. or, like this or church anything too like that. It's doesn't like... worship the white race. And like, you know. yes, <laughs> <laughs> <That's the difference. laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, yeah, there's some like current current events, like history stuff. Like when they talk about the Orthodox Church, they're just written in like you know the 80s, and so it's like. Of course, all those Orthodox countries are under the communists, except for Greece. And, you know, um, but again, it all ultimately comes down to, yes, that is a, like a Jewish mm. plot. Christianity is like a, you know, alien religion to the white man. And so like any kind of philosophizing on those subjects is just, it's boring because you know, what how do they not say. bore themselves? I don't know. Don't don't they dread? I mean, if you look they have at to these go and write guys, the same article again for like forty years, it's an it's like hell. Yeah, I mean, look, half of their old guard, is, their Pontifus Maximus is in prison. Half of these guys that are like the old guard are just dudes in prison that I guess are just hanging on to this for some reason, but still fighting with one another. Like like you know, I said there's been like a million spinoffs, and on one of these pages they're denouncing like one of the other old guard guys. This dude rudy stanko who like <laughs> great name, uh, i guess like is i think in prison also but um <laughs> had like profited off of creativity texts or whatever because he had been close to class and at one point i mean it's the same thing that happened like when you know the the a and p collapsed you know what i mean mm. or like any of these nazi groups collapse and they just all start you know fighting over what's like the scraps of what's left while wearing like you know hitler uniforms and stuff like that that's what this is yes Basically, except that they call themselves reverends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, we often it's say on this podcast that when we finish an episode, that maybe in the future we'll come back to that group or individual. <laughs> but I think this one, well, please, no. we probably shouldn't come back to. No, we'll never come back to. I mean, not not in any <laughs> kind of meaningful way. Unfortunately, you know, we will. They mm. will come up again. Yeah. Because every once in a while, like anybody like that came up in the Nazi scene in the U S I think in like the nineties mm. and early two thousands probably had some sort of connection to the world church of the creator. Like, um, like, you know, recently, uh, when the identity, like a couple of weeks ago when the identity of that, um, uh, the guy from Rundo's group from the Rise Above movement, uh, the guy was doing all their media stuff who uses the name Luke, uh, Corey, Agat or whatever the fuck. Um, when his identity was revealed, of course, he had been like an active member of the creativity movement in Montana, which is one of their biggest bases. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so like no matter what, you can't – especially when you're dealing with like that generation of American Nazis, you're going to deal with them at some point or yeah. another or anything regarding like the, the white power music scene and the like. It's just that's, – that's where they were at, you know, um, and they – were able to make some sort of impact in that very, very, very dumb scene. <laughs> I mean, so dumb. It's I, so bafflingly dumb. I mean, I'd be curious to hear, um, because I know that they are quite active in like Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I'd be curious to hear more about like 
you know, what they're, what they were up to over there. I mean, I know this is kind of an America centered arc, but it seems that like in the, in the newer incarnations of the creativity Alliance, there's uh, like a particularly strong Australian presence. Um, and you know, uh, they nominally have chapters all over the world. I mean, and their website has like, you know, they translate to stuff. They have stuff in, um, like German, Serbian and Croatian, mm. um, French, uh, Spanish. My guess is that those are all people from like the white power music scene, like blood and honor dudes and stuff like that. Um, but you know, you really have to wonder like what the appeal is to somebody yeah. in like Croatia or something. This is like ninety nine point nine nine percent white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, a religion based on like kind of trolling the First Amendment, sorta. Yeah, and, and who does that appeal to like outside violence of against like yeah. non-white people? And yeah, so it's I, my guess is that yeah, it it'll continue to live on in some sort of edge lord, you know, blood and honor. Let's like play offensive Nazi music scenes. And that's about it. Cause you know what the, the, these they're, they have like 10 pontify in various different prisons <laughs> who are like going to get out at some point and then continue to do nothing with their lives. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not going to fucking go anywhere. This is, it's, it's a definitely to me, it seems like it's a now like a relic of a bygone era. Uh, like, you know, none of them, like I, uh, my guess is that they're probably not like attracting any new members anytime soon because like what Nazis can move on to now is like a lot more you know hip and stuff like that. They're doing like a lot they like, like yeah Casa Pound and like let's let's be Vice News and fucking do banner drops and graffiti and like yeah right uh, appropriate like rap music because somehow that's okay now for them to do, <laughs> uh, and like I think this kind of like creativity bullshit just i don't know uh i don't i don't really see them continuing on in any meaningful way thankfully yeah so hopefully these idiots will continue to fight each other and die out eventually well that's that's, it, that's my analysis that's, of it <laughs> i on the other hand uh await a thousand pontify <laughs> <laughs> all over the earth all right let's let's uh let's let's leave this dumb 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 fake religion okay move on to to hopefully greener pastures. Well, yeah. What, what's next for us? Maybe some poetry, huh? Well, maybe some literature. Yeah, I mean, we'll. Yes, uh, this will be like a quite in uh, contrast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. Yeah, yeah. We're all gonna get culture shock here. Yeah, we're going into Ezra Pound. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's very far away from this. Yeah, it's very different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a big tent. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. Right. Bye. Hey there. Fritz here from The Empire Never Ended. This has been one of our weekly free episodes for free people. But for premium people, we also have weekly premium episodes, which you can get at patreon.com slash 10 T-E-N-E-P-O-D. And also follow our various social media things in the, in the show description there. Like and subscribe them. Follow them. Like and sub- follow and subscribe and follow them. Do it.